Hello everyone, I'm Mrs. Maddox. I'm from Kids on the Land. And we're so sorry we can't be with you all out on the land this year, but since you can't come to us, we're gonna try to come to you through some video presentations. So let's get started. I brought with me a box today and it has some of the most valuable stuff in the world in it. Can you guess what I might have in my box? All of civilization depends on it. Yes, that's right. I have brought soil in my box. And this is healthy topsoil. It is so important. Sometimes it's the difference between prosperity and poverty, even life and death. It is as important as the air we breathe. Let me give you a little demonstration why. This apple <coughs> represents the planet Earth, and I'm going to cut it into four pieces. Now, I've got to remove three of these pieces. Does anyone know why? Well, yes, our planet is 75% water. So we have this 25% or a fourth of the apple left. And this represents the land surface we have on the earth. But, <clears throat> I need to cut it in half because this represents the land we have that we can't grow our food. It would be deserts, um, mountaintops, the Arctic poles, maybe just swampy land. So this is really the land we have to grow all of our food for us and our animals. But um, I need to cut it some more because we live on this land and this would represent the how, where our houses are built, our schools, hospitals, highways, uh, national parks. So we're not growing food on this land, but here now we have this little piece left, and this is where we would grow all of our food. But I need to peel this little piece and put this away because this little slim piece represents the healthy topsoil which is about five inches deep where we grow our food. Our lives depend on it. Do you think maybe we should take care of it and be sure that it's healthy? You know, <clears throat> healthy soil is alive. It's moving. There are some amazing creatures that are in the healthy soil. Let me give you a look at some of them. This is a soil food web. All this life in a healthy soil is connected. At the bottom, you see the earthworms and beetles. Next, you have springtails. You have mites and, and Further up in the top part of the soil, you'll find some bacteria and fungi, and they're all working together, cycling nutrients for our plants. And the plants depend on these beneficial soil organisms to obtain nutrients and water from that soil and to prevent, to prevent disease. Now, here's another look 
at that interconnectedness that you would see in the soil food web. And you can see how they're all working together, dependent on each other, if the soil is healthy. Now, I want you to do something for me. I want you to take out a pencil or a pen if you have it, and I want you to put a little dot in the palm of your hand, and then we're gonna go look at some of these amazing little critters that are in our healthy soil. Now we are going to see a video which will show some of these microorganisms that we've been talking about that you will find in the very top few inches of healthy soil. The video I'm about to share was made by Dr. Pat Richardson, a University of Texas research scientist. It shows some of the diversity of organisms that are part of healthy living soil. Remember, we learn that more soil life means more vegetation, healthier vegetation, better water infiltration, less runoff, and less erosion. The small creatures you're going to see were collected from the first inch of soil, or the topsoil, on a ranch in the Trans-Pecos ecoregion of Texas. Think back now what you've learned. What ecoregion do we live in? Yes, we live in the rolling plains. Now the video opens with a white paper with lines on it. The lines are 0.5 millimeters apart. They are five mil there is five millimeters in an inch. So that white paper with lines on it is one fiftieth of an inch. We call these mesophonum. Meso means middle size and fauna means animal. And they are in a petri dish on a wet paper towel. That is the background, plus the crumbly brown stuff you see is soil particles, sand, silt, or clay. The paper towel is kept damp during the filming because the mesofauna need moisture. You're going to see them running around. Now remember I had you put a dot in the palm of your hand? Well, they are like the little dots running around. It shows the diversity of organisms that are part of healthy living soil. And Dr. Richardson used a very powerful microscope to take the video. The zoom is from 6x to 40x. The important thing to take away from this video is that the life in the soil means more plants, healthier plants, better water soaking into the soil, less runoff, less erosion. And to get more life in the soil, the soil needs cover. Bare soil is too hot, too dry, and does not have enough organic matter to support life in the soil. So, I'm going to turn on the video, and the first thing you're gonna see are some little soil mites that eat plant parts. You'll see the background is the soil particles. Now you see this little mite, and then you're noticing a and fly larvae. It has hairs. Why the colors? Next, coming into the picture is an ant. There's some mites going by. And you'll notice that the ant seems to be cleaning another little microorganism. 
and Dr. Pat Richardson thinks they're getting some sort of nourishment. She says she videoed this little sequence for 10 minutes. Now you'll see this little microorganism moving away, and you'll notice it has a long, sticky tail. Now we're getting the site. Coming into the picture, you're going to see a columbola. This columbola is next to a fly larvae, long and yellow. And you'll notice that uh, she says it has a mohawk hairdo. It a, has a very beautiful little mite that is making its way to this columbola. The mite has lots of hair or scales like butterflies. It seems that the mite is getting into the space of that kalimbala. She says probably trying to take a nap, and he begins to shoo that mite away. Now we notice Another columbola. It has a long tail, has pulled it around, it will attach to its tummy, and it's cleaning once again. They get that cleaning lotion from a tube coming from their mouth. Now you see a uh, podo columbola coming into the picture. And there seems to be something tasty there. This is a, a little bit of a stick that is in the soil. And this podocalimbola has tiny claws and is probably eating bacteria or fungi off the stick. But the kalimbala wants it to go away. Look at the colors. This little organism gets bigger and bigger as it grows and sheds its skin, which it'll do many times in its lifetime. Now, Dr. Pat gets very excited about this particular sequence. You need to watch closely <clears throat> because it's going to poop. And that is a delicious lunch for somebody. It has nitrogen, which is food for the plants, or maybe delicious food for bacteria. Here comes another organism into view. It has a wonderful color. Now look at this organism. It is cleaning and cleaning its legs, but it's going to do something pretty special here in a moment. This video is 30 frames a second, and in one frame it is there, and one frame it's gone. Here's another grooming sequence with two ants. She says, we don't know why they do this, but they think it's getting nourishment. There's a little scale insect lying down at the bottom of that screen. And in a moment, after the ant has cleaned everything on the ant, it goes over to the scale insect and begins cleaning on it.
And you'll notice that scale insect is just waving its legs like crazy. Here's a mite with a long pointed nose. You might call him an elephant foot mite. It's cleaning each foot. A mite has eight legs. Once again, that cleaning solution comes out of the mouth. And notice its long wands for sensors. Now look at this mite. It is camouflaged. It's called a herbivore mite and has this strange beak. Most herbivore mites are slow moving and in a moment it will cross the measuring tape. And you will see that it is a millimeter and a half long. That's about the size of that pencil dot you put in the palm of your hand. This looks like a bag lady to Dr. Pat. Those are old egg cases on her back. Here's a mite, camouflaged again. And it's a predator mite, which means it's eating something. And in a moment, she will zoom down with the microscope and you can see the antenna of a calimbola sticking out of its mouth. Now here comes a pseudo-scorpion. Has no stinging tail, but they are a predator and they have paralyzing poison in their claws. They're very secretive creatures. It's found a fly larvae, which is dead, but the pseudo-scorpion is eating and it has stuck its mouth in and is sucking the juices out of that fly larvae. In a minute, there, you can see the mouth parts. It usually waits with its arms outspread. Now we're going to see a millipede, an into calimbola, and a pseudoscorpion. Wonder what they're going to do. The milli millipede gets on the measure tape, and it's probably four millimeters long. It's a teeny little worm. It has two pairs of legs per segment. Now a centipede has one pair of legs per segment. Now look at this fly larvae. And look again, it's camouflaged. It has a protruding mouth it will eventually form a pupa cover and it comes out as your common housefly. Remember, most of these are no bigger than that dot in the palm of your hand. Now here's a little red velvet mite and has red eyes and once again cleaning itself, cleaning its feet, it goes over and cleans the feet on the other side. There the cleaning lotion comes out of its mouth. Why do they all seem to be grooming so much? Why all the colors? 
Dr. Pat says she doesn't have the answer yet. You're going to see a flying insect thrip, and you need to watch it closely. There's some little mites crawling by, but it's going to do something unusual here in a moment. It's going to flare out, and it's gone. That's the end of our video, but all of that is going on under our feet in just an inch of healthy topsoil. Scientists are beginning to understand that healthy soil is much more complex than a civilization in a tropical rainforest, and we all depend on soil. All plants, all animals, depend on soil for their own health and well-being. And remember, covered soil surface with plants or litter means soil is healthier and more organisms can live in it and distribute nutrients. So what do you think? Do you realize we had all of that activity going on under our feet? What about the colors? After I saw this, I couldn't think or look at soil in my garden the same way. I find myself talking to them, saying sorry when I have to pull out a weed or chop up something, and I'm going to disturb all that interconnectedness. So remember, to keep this soil food healthy, we need to keep our soil covered so we are having better microbes, those organisms, they need both food and moisture and water. And bare soil is not a safe place for them. It's hot, there's no cover, and there's very little moisture. So remember, covered soil, you'll have less erosion, better infiltration of water, and so now, let's go outside to the pasture and let's look for some spots where we might find healthy soil. Well, our video showed us examples of all the living organisms in healthy soil. Now, those organisms have a job to do. They're not just all running around in the soil. The organisms in healthy soil are providing what the plants need. So I brought you out to the pasture and we're going to be looking for areas of healthy soil. Now, we'll be like detectives. We're looking for clues and the clues are that you want to know if the area is good for the soil organisms. Is it a healthy area? And we know that be because the soil will be covered. Now, when I say covered, I mean uh, the soil surface will have plants on it, may have uh, what I call litter, which is decaying plants that are decomposing on the surface of the soil. and that, all of that taking place makes the environment be good for those ar microorganisms because they will have nutrients, they will have moisture, uh, and that all works because it's a partnership between those organisms and what's on the surface of the soil. But we need that soil surface covered if it's going to help us find healthy areas of healthy soil. So I, earlier today, 
I laid out this hula hoop. And remember, as um, detectives, and I've told you what we're looking for, we're looking for covered soil, which means that there are plants on top of the soil surface. And at this particular place, um, if you look closely, we can see grasses, we can see forbs or weeds, even have some animal signs, and there is some litter, which is that the dead and uh, decaying plants that are decomposing, and, and that helps add fertilizer to the soil. So, looking at this, would you think that the plant, uh, that the microorganisms are in a healthy place? Do you think that it, when it rains that there'll be infiltration because of the plants? There won't be erosion, it won't be rolling off. And importantly, will this be a cool environment? Because the microorganisms don't like for it to be really hot where they're living in the soil. If we have decided that this is probably an area of the pasture where there is um, a healthy environment for our soil microorganisms, then we're going to have this soil food web working for us. Because you can see there are all sorts of connections between the microorganisms. And as I said, they like the cool environment. They like to be able to provide the nutrients. That would be minerals or um, nitrogen that the plant roots take up into the plant, which helps the plant grow and also helps prevent diseases. So detectives, I think we have covered an, we have discovered an area in this pasture where there probably is healthy soil. Now, there's another hula hoop that I put out earlier today. And once again, we're going to be looking for that good uh, cover on the soil in order for us to find an area here that might be providing a healthy soil environment for our microorganisms. So remembering what we learned earlier, about what the soil microorganisms prefer is the soil to be covered. So let's look at this. Are we seeing a total cover? No, we're seeing some bare ground. We do have some cover. And there's even a, a little of the litter, decaying plants on the surface, but most of the area is bare ground. And so what we would have here would be a warmer environment. Just think for a minute. If I had put out soil thermometers this morning and I put one in the area of the pasture we were looking at earlier, and then I put one over here in this area of the pasture, which one of these Hoodle hoops do you think would have the warmest soil? Yeah, of course this one. And that's because it's not a good cover. Now the microorganisms, those little worms, uh, fly larvae, the mites, springtails, are all working together in the soil when it is covered and the soil is healthy. They're providing those nutrients, as I said earlier, the minerals or the, the uh, nitrogen that they take to the plant's roots and then that takes it up into the plant. That helps the plant to grow and that even fights diseases. Now, we're out here on rangeland, but do you know this same principle works in town. I know your, if your mom has a garden or she has flower beds, she knows to keep her soil moist. And you'll often see people putting out what we call mulch because that provides that nice environment for those microorganisms 
to survive. Now, just remember, covered soil is healthy soil. And we're so sorry you weren't with us out here on the land, but we're gonna be with you once this pandemic is over. Bye-bye. Let's keep it that